Hasnain, where's Ali right now? He said he's uh, he's too busy to think right now, so he can't join us. Well, what's the story there? I don't know. He's he's uh, at a spa somewhere, laying laying down, relaxing, sun. If you're too busy to think, aren't you then technically too busy to do anything? When an 85 year old tells you he's too busy to think, <laughs> that just means he just doesn't want to be bothered. He wants to be left alone. He's at the spa drinking his virgin mojito. God knows what he's doing. Hello, assalamu alaikum, and welcome back to another episode of 786 Boulevard. We are parked at the intersection of culture and spirituality, and this is episode number 17, Netflix's Morsel in Conversation with the Cast. I don't know Netflix's new original film Morsel tells the true story of the Iraqi SWAT team who battled ISIS during their last days and weeks, reigning terror over Iraq. It is a story of Iraqis rising up in the face of terrorism and rising up against injustice to root out terrorism from their homeland. We are very lucky today to be joined by two of the cast members, Ta'ar al shei and Mohaiman Mahbuba, where we'll be discussing the film what it means to us and what it means to the cast members, the process they went through in getting cast and the process they went through in making the film and how connected they are to their Iraqi identity and what this film means for Iraqi representation, for Arab representation and for Muslim representation on film. Thank you for joining us here over at 786 Boulevard. Ta'ar, Mohaiman, thank you so much for joining me and Hasnain here on the podcast. I really appreciate you guys' time. Um, you know, it's 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 so amazing that we're sitting down speaking about a film that has just come out, you know, which is uh, really fantastic. The fact that it just came out like, what, two, three years ago? Uh, and here we are sitting down uh, talking about it. You really make us feel like we're, 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 not, a pod, we're not just like a, a, a very low podcast, but rather, you know, I don't know, like a Jimmy Kimmel Live or, or something uh, in those kind of, uh, in, in that hierarchy. So Listen, really appreciate we're, we're you guys. We're a big deal. We're a big deal, right? <laughs> has Nain's always, has Nain's always shooting our praises and I'm always trying to be humble. But thank you so much, guys, uh, f for joining us. We, so me and Hasnain watched it the other day. Um, and like I can safely say like it was really like a, a, a thrill ride um, Usually when films come out about uh, things that happen uh, in that part of the world, you know, you're not too sure about um, what kind of you know uh, How they're gonna depict uh, uh, Iraqis Arabs and Muslims, so uh, it's pretty refreshing. So just like generally, you know um, Before we get into to you guys Hasnain, I want to get your like your thoughts and reactions uh, to the film. Uh, keep in mind, these guys spent weeks and months working on it, yeah? So if you're going to be critical, make sure you, nah, you, nah. you, you <laughs> be nice. Uh, production quality was great. Um, it wasn't cheesy like you see a lot of these films. Um, uh, it was a great story. I love that they had captions because it was in Arabic so I could follow along. Acting was phenomenal. You know, I'm as a filmmaker myself, that's my critique, right? I want to know like what cameras they use, how they shot it, what angles they shot. You know who edited you know it was great because when you see a lot of these films you know when somebody shoots somebody and they get a they get a, a wound you know it, it looks cheesy it's like all right you yeah. know like it, it was great <laughs> but this one was great you can tell that a lot of care a lot of money went into it yeah uh, i really enjoyed it um and Noor, you know when you told me like hey you should watch this film like let, let's let's do something i'm like uh i'll, I'll take it I'll, I'll watch it but you know i don't know if i have faith but uh it blew me away it was one of those films that i'm like all right i'm grateful that i watched this film yeah i'll Thank definitely I'll, I'll definitely agree like watching it like usually when you watch films that are you know made with muslim cast and and, and arab cast yeah. you know they're, they're, even if they're high quality there's a certain finesse to it that kind of lacks but because i guess it was a hollywood production um it was just fantastic i felt like a, a war movie the kind of war movie that you'll see about yeah. a film set in world war ii or vietnam or, or, or anything else so let's get into you guys thought and, and when you know, i feel like you guys have some very interesting stories to tell us um but just like firstly you know as as iraqis as as, as iraqis who live uh, in, in the West, Tha'ar, you're from uh, Wales, the land of sheep, and uh, Mohamed, you're from Detroit, uh, the land of Ford. So, like, the land of Ford. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> how do you, what does the film mean to you? Like, as Iraqis seeing Iraqi representation on film, um, you know, usually, especially when you, in the aftermath of the Iraq war, whenever we see Iraqis depicted on film, they're depicted as the other or as terrorists or just kind of like nameless and faceless. Um, but in this, you know, I, I saw one of your, 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 your captions on Instagram, Mohamed, uh, referring to you guys as the Iraqi Avengers. Um, so it's like you really, you know, you really put yourself on a standard, but the film itself has put you on that level. Um, so what does the film mean to you guys? 
start, you go first, and uh, I'll follow through, you know, by age of respect. Yeah. <laughs> well, just obviously, quickly, I've been in the industry for 20 years. Right. And it was obviously you're waiting up. You know when you sign up for this <clears throat> industry, you're going to be pigeonholed. Well, is the way you look. That's how I see. I say to people, it's, it's you know, like the Russo said to me, 90% how you look, 10% how you act. Is it yeah. look what gets you in the door? You look like them guys. We put the 10%, we've seen you on your tapes and everything. And that's how they give you the role. But for answer your question, it was when was it going to happen? Because like you said, we're always portrayed as the ISIS fighters, suicide bomber. Like if you look at my CV, ISIS fighter number two, one and three, man with a rucksack, suicide bomber, terrorist, excuse me, um, villain. And then the Russos come around. Well, sorry, Matthew Carnahan come around. Mm -hmm. Read Luke Mongol's article, you know, the, um, the something battle to destroy ISIS. Fell in love with it. Looked at it and said, this got to be a film. Yeah. Took it to the Russos. They said, okay, no problem. Let's, um, I will produce, but I want to direct it. He said, I want to direct it and I want to use Arabs. Let them tell the story. This is their story. This is their story about their country. Let's use Iraqi actors, get as many as we can to tell the story in their language, in their dialogue. So that's what it meant to us, what it meant mm. to me. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I think that's one thing that really stood out to me. I, I, I travel to, to, to Iraq a lot and usually when I see Iraqis depicted on film, it's usually non-Iraqi actors who are trying to pull off that really tricky uh, Iraqi accent, which is not, which, which we know is, is, is really tough, but like the authenticity of it really stood out. Like it felt like it was shot in Iraq. It felt like it was shot in the war. It didn't feel like a film, to be honest with you. It felt very real. Um, Mohamed, what, what, what was your thoughts? I know if I'm, uh, if, if your IMDb is correct, I know this was your first kind of uh, a big budget film um, and hopefully, you know, not your last, but like, what was your experience like uh, uh, being connected how, how do you feel to be connected to that film what does the film mean to you so for me it's it's a different story it's just not a film it's something I take pride in a piece of art that I was in because I did live in Iraq during uh, from 2005 after the support like after the downfall of Saddam Hussein I lived in Iraq and I saw like the civil wars in Iraq that happened in 2007 by the militia groups and we uh by like terrorist groups and we all i was also there during 2013 through 14. oh wow so okay during the time of like the bases and like initial like startup of isis and once uh i ended up leaving iraq and uh, coming back to the united states in 2013 uh end of 2013. so that was like i was in fear of isis i saw people die i've seen i've seen my friends die i've seen everything so it's it's not something that you just see in a movie you feel it that's why it was for me to act as someone to fight and i was always too young to fight for my country mm. and i was always like you know i was the only boy in my family so i never got that experience and like to be a soldier and everything and i really respect every single soldier that fought that's why i related them to the avengers of mosul because the avengers is a superhero to me the people that fought for mosul not just the swat everyone that fought for mosul in iraq to me is a part of an avenger and that's how I see them. They're superheroes. They're real life superheroes. They fought these battles. They went through this war. They sacrificed their lives for what they stand for. And to mm -hmm. me, that's someone being a superhero. And mm -hmm. me just acting as a part of movies, the least thing I can do. Mm -hmm. That's how to yeah. into the world. That's the least I can do. Yeah, it's absolutely a, a beautiful perspective and, and a beautiful way to put it. And I think it, you really hit the nail on the head when it's like, Sometimes we look at um, these things as art and we forget the, 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 the real stories behind them. You know, as we know, uh, especially here in the West, you know, whenever you see a news article that ISIS killed this many people or this, this group killed that many people or there was a terrorist bomb, it's just numbers, right? It's just text on screen. But, you know, when you sit with people who've lost uncles, friends uh, like yourself, brothers, etc., um, you know, I have many friends in Iraq who have actually physically lost people or seen people uh, being killed. And, and, and that's different because that just not, that's not just a 90 minute or 20 or, or two hour movie on Netflix. That's not flesh right. and bone. That's someone's soul that's taken from you. You know, so I, I, I do definitely want to get back into that and, and, and talk about that because I think that that's very important. But just taking a step back and, and I want to uh, uh, I think both of you have very different kind of perspectives on this. I want to ask you both about how connected you are to your Iraqi identity. So. Um, 
thought, you know, I know that, you know, you've been working in the industry for 20 years, you, you, you live in Wales, so you're essentially living outside Iraq. What, what's your connection like with Iraq? Did you always grow up feeling like an Iraqi? Were you always very connected to your roots? Do you head back often? Uh, what's your relationship like with your Iraqi identity? Still connected with the roots because like I was born in Iraq in 1980 when I moved to Wales in 1983. So I've been here for a long time. I've been back twice, still connected to my roots, meaning like, you know, Iraqi friends, um, our dishes, you know, like Bamiya, um, Tabula, like uh, the, um, the, the famous Iraqi breakfast. So still rooted with that. I still speak to my family and I'm back home. So that Iraqi corn, I think that Iraqi strength, so is very important. Um, touching on what Mahayman said about how he felt he's a representation for people. So in this film, we showed our emotions because we're representing not just the SWAT team, I'm representing family, which I've lost in wars. I'm representing the Iraqi people themselves. So I, we, we were representations for a lot of people. So people who watched it wrote me up and said, thank you, you reminded me of your my uncle. Thank you, you reminded me of my brother who I lost in the war. Hmm. It, 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 was a, it, it was a relief and it was nice. And it was like, um, like a deep feeling for the families who like lost people over there. Does that make sense? And 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 the transition which give them that feeling, which they've been waiting for, was then by using Iraqi actors. So the route, going back to your question, was the best gamble they ever took is using Arab actors to tell the story because in in reality, there's no other way in putting it. People was fed up about the 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 white actors being the heroes and cigars at the end of the film singing American songs, hey, we saved the war, which in hindsight and real in reality. They caused it with the Middle East. So it's like, listen, if I would have turned around to my mum and said, I'm in a film called Mosul, it's about Iraq, it's being filmed in, in Morocco, um, I'm filming with Chris Hemsworth, Tom Cruise, Will Smith, she'll go, ah, I don't want to watch it. They've seen it all before. Yeah. They took it as a real life fil a news article. So that one hour and 42 minutes where everyone was with us in the day, the whole film was based in the day, that <coughs> Their Mohammed was one hour forty one minutes. <clears throat> when people watched it, they felt like they was with us. Does that and make Thar, sense? And Thar looks like a scary guy, man. The guy's person Thar looks like a soldier, like he's scary. Right? <laughs> Especially with so, that bit. In, in, yeah, in yeah, the beard was crazier. Yeah, so, was crazy. He was scary. So, yeah, when I told people and I told my mum and I told Arabs, it's in our ledger, it's in our language. I said, be careful, excuse my language. No CDC, I've got to get my point across. And they swore because they said you're representing our people. Yeah. No, they laughed at us. Now it's your turn and it's your chance to show the world <laughs> we're not all the same. And you got one hour and 42 minutes to do it. And that's a hard, that's a big ask to change the whole world's mind. Look at the narrative of the world where they fought. They're all the same ISIS, Al Shabaab, Hamas, Hezbollah. Look at all the groups. Everyone thinks we're, we got the same mentality as them. We mm. haven't. Their ideology and the, the way they um, radicalize and the way. We um, they get de-radicalized. It's totally different. So see the root, the root and the foundation for this film was really strong and it's very sensitive. And it was a massive gamble and mm. a very sensitive subject for the Russos, for Matthew Canahan to touch. Because you know what the critics are like, they'll just shut you down. So right. I got good friends in London. And um, Nahar, she's an actress. She was with me in Baghdad Central. And her husband, Mahmoud, he's the editor for BBC on the Arab part. He rang me up and said, I had the pen and paper looking for false. He said, I was looking for false. Americans are behind it. There's an American writer. There's no way going to be on our side. They're not going to invest our money, whether they're using Arab actors and let us be the good guys. No way. They have to put their input in. He said, the only thing I've written on a piece of paper was, wow. He said, I just take him back. There was not one fault in the film. Because they let you, we run off. They said, okay, no problem. Like you watch the film, yeah, guys? My character name's Hooker in it. They don't call me Hooker. You listen carefully, they call me Hooker. Not Hooker. Hooker. I know it's that. I, I, I know it's that. Yeah, I know it's that. The hotel scene. Remember the hotel scene when I go down? And you go down and I jump on top of you and you say, Tha'a, Tha'a, Musawab. Mm -hmm. So they called me by my name. They wanted to make it look that real. I said, no. He said, no, I'm still using your name because especially you're Iraqis. Yeah. Let's take this as a, yes, it's a film. Yes, there's no one being killed, really. But he said, if we can call each other by each other's name, it, it cuts a massive stigma between the character and the scene. And that's what I felt because with my scene, when 
the Major Jassim says, the Major Jassim says, Fa'ar, Fa'ar, my son, my son, Fa'ar, Fa'ar, because Fa'ar, the translation is Fa'ar is Fa'ar in Arabic. It touched everyone. Hmm. They was like, yo, I'm sure he called you by your real name. I said he did. So that answers the questions to the roots. I think, I mean, one one thing I noticed as well, just leading on from, from that point, was even the way you guys were speaking often didn't, because I understand uh, Iraqi Arabic, it didn't correlate exactly to the subtitles, but it was almost as if you're saying what the subtitles, what the script wanted you to say, but in a very realistic way. Right? So I, I really uh, appreciated all the dialogue as well and, and, and how realistic it was. But I, I would say that it's, it's, it's very refreshing, honestly, that you guys, I mean, the thing is like when me and Hasnain sit back at home and watch a film, um, again, you have those kind of uh, prerequisites of, you know, is it going to, what kind of representation, representation is it going to be? Uh, what's what, what, what's going to be like the political kind of uh, uh, intention there? You know, you have all these questions in your head and even when you're watching it, you don't know how much you guys really cared about it. You know? Yeah, so, of course. So, so, so he hearing you, hearing you uh, sorry, sorry, to, to, before, before you can carry on, but no, sorry, he yeah. he hearing, hearing you guys like, like so passionate saying we're there to represent our dead. Like it's not a joke. We're not there looking for a big break you know we're not there being so happy that we're in a, a film produced by the Avengers uh, uh, directors that's not what it's about it's about there representing our dead that's a divine uh, you know that's a that, that, that's a deep divine uh, purpose that's which, why, which that's is really why refreshing that's why people got to understand when they watch this movie that they everyone's going to have a political side everyone's yeah. going to find some some way possible to make this movie a political movie but in reality the background of this movie why we did this was that Matthew and producers and Luke were all touched by this article that they wanted to portray it and show this because who reads news articles a lot like people Gen Z like who are you gonna have that reads like actual pictures like measure it to Spiker Spiker what happened in Iraq no one really knows about that yeah. Spiker they stopped the whole wedding ISIS and they shot and killed yeah. and this is this is something you don't know unless you live in Iraq or in the middle, even in the Middle East. You don't hear about these things. So when the SWAT has one mission, and that was our mission, what we did was portray one of the events, one of the like one of the seventy-two hour wars that happened in Mosul, in Iraq in total. So hundred percent, you see it from a bigger perspective between oh la al hashid la and the SWAT la. Nahay <laughs> tiliom, everyone is fighting for the freedom of Iraq. Everyone's fighting against terrorism, hmm. and that's what we wanted to focus on, and we wanted to show that. It's not always the American heroes, American soldiers, or like any outside help. It's it's really within them. This is what's happening in Iraq. This is their daily lives. This is this what this is what happened in 2016. Yeah. Like yeah. we're not talking about something happened with Saddam Hussein and the Americans came and helped. No, this is after the U.S. troops were out. This is what happens in the uh, the backstories of Iraq. This is what what was going on in 2016. Yeah. 2016 people look at 2016 in America. It was nothing, you know, I was relaxing. It was my senior year in high school, if we were being honest, you know, I was just relaxing, chilling, having a great time. But in the back of my head, my dad is telling me what happened. This is going on in Iraq. This is going on. This is going on. And this like affects you because I still have friends there. I still have family there. Majority of my family are there. So to know that my dad is still here because of like the instability, I'm still here because of life opportunity is better here and like these Iraqis no one has a representation for them in the, in the movie industry and especially their war which is way more bigger we have so many movies about um remembering everything every war you can think about it, the holocaust world war one world war two but isis war what's going on yeah, yeah you know like isis are very quick to shut us down they're very quick to shut media up and people are very scared to touch the subject of ISIS and Iraq together. Definitely. They're feared. they're feared because if you go and search our movie, right now ISIS released on uh, YouTube, like pro-ISIS groups on YouTube, they show Al Mosul from another perspective and it's fully edited and it's cuts from their footage and like their wow. radicalism of Islam and it's disgusting and, wow. it, and it portrays the worst, worst ever. Like it's sickening to watch. But yeah. that's what they're. That's what people are not understanding. It's not about. That's what it is. It's not about yeah. How why are they watching a soap opera? Because 
at the end of the day, man, you're 72 hours deep into a, uh, into a war. If you think about it, if you see TV and you see a time to be boys and like just relax, you'll take that chance no matter who you are. Any soldier would. Yeah. If you can take a breather and relax. So that's why there's a lot of things that in the movie are hidden stories that represent a bigger picture. Yeah. And that's what I feel like people should. It takes more than once to realize, yeah, the end mission. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think, I think you, you, you both have kind of alluded to the fact that you know, some a lot of people will take this movie as 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 a political statement and 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 forget the, the the human cost uh, uh, of the war, which I think is very admirable. Um, there is, however, like one scene where I I do kind of want to talk about it. And I'm not going to ask you guys for your own personal opinions on it, but I just want to give like my own perspective on it. There was that scene where you know you have uh, uh, Major Jarsim uh, trading cigarettes uh, for 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 missiles and rockets with the uh with the paramilitary groups and the film kind of went out of its way to say hey these guys are uh you know fully uh, iranian backed they're kind of uh, they're there for their own kind of cause uh, and that's kind of it you know th- there was a bit of dialogue alluding to the fact that, that everyone fights together um but that narrative w- was kind of put there and and, and just to like, give it a context the reason i feel like i can have an opinion on this is because i've been to uh the front lines in 2014 uh, I went to um, uh, up up to Alam uh, uh, and to create to do a documentary about various Sunni groups who are fighting ISIS to kind of fight that narrative that the West was pushing, which was as a Sunni Shia war, ISIS fighting the the the, the, the armies and the, and the militias. Um, so, watching that scene, I, I felt like it went out of his way to very to make a very political statement that hey, this fight should only be uh, 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 Iraqis, which is you know the mindset of many Iraqis in Iraq. Um, but these groups are kind of like fringe groups who are purely Iranian backed, purely looking for for uh, 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 purely purely in place uh, for 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 you know um, to strengthen to, to strengthen Iran, and that's kind of like it. What's your perspective on that? Did I, did I misread the scene? Uh, you know, do you feel like it wasn't a political statement? Because I do have a few friends who watched it that are that have kind of got that that, that kind of sentiment from the scene. So. I, uh, I want to start on this because I also had an art, uh, talk with a lot of people, uh, especially like family members and everything. If you pay attention to the scene before it, uh, Walid's asking if uh, there's also Eunice asking, should we call American backup? And Justin says, no, they'll bomb us all and they won't care. And then should we call, should we call the Iraqi uh, army or like everything? He's like, no, they'll take us back and tell us to go back. And then this scene, at the same time, there's a drone and they're like looking for it. And the one person that gets to shoot it and shoots it down and saves them is the colonel of Spahani. Mm-hmm. So that's why he says, so if you think about it from a perspective of Al-Hashid, Al-Hashid no, it's, it's saying that we're fighting on the same grounds, we're on the same places. And but at this time of day, you guys are our only help. We're gonna would rather work with you guys than work with the other groups that we just listed. Mm. So we're gonna go. Do you want to make a trade? Hey, what is your trade? What's your mission? What do you guys do? They don't even use if the ammunition we took is ammunition they're not even using. So they were like, oh yeah, you can just take it, but you know we'll just have it cigarettes. Mm. You know it's it's showing it it's, it shows it shows a very serious like approach because. And he tells them on a qatalit ma'ahawai or everything. Yeah, yeah, so he, I remember that line. Yeah. So, so there's there's a lot of there's a lot of hidden stories and like there's a lot of ways you can take it hmm. because of the hashid and with all respect, it's it's everyone's war. You know, they yeah. came and say like fatawi say sistani and like everything, and we respect that. But this war, that battle, was not the battle of the hashid. The, like we're not saying the whole Mosul was liberated from those six men no we said this is the story of these six men this is what they did so a lot of people took it from another aspect of oh we just emptied out Mosul no Mosul kept on going that's why the movie ends with Amir how far is your son it's not like yeah. you right. know like there's a bigger story than that it's not just like oh yeah we're the six SWAT men that survived and we're, we entered out and saved Mosul no this is the story of six men that were involved in this that their story also got lost in the in the drafts of the war. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, that's how you should think about it. There's there's stories about Al Hashid, and if you read them, you'll be like surprised. There's stories about Al Furqa Dhahabiya. You know, there's stories about Shurqa becoming SWAT, uh, becoming SWAT, and there's the Shurqa becoming ISIS, and there's Shurqa, you know, uh, snitching on people and like selling out. There's sellouts. There's everything around. Like, 
Iraq is a war-torn country, yeah, so yeah. you can always find a way. People will always try to bring a way to make it political or bring out hatred towards another group and bring out hatred and say like this movie was this. Of course, they're gonna argue because they were arguing in the movie about their prisoner. You know, like if you're if you and a pal are in an argument, you would also argue, and then you see how it just ends off as soon as they kill him. Like, okay, we don't even have a problem. Like, okay, tech you know like it ends bro there's arguments that happen there's it's not all like oh habibi arras like no yeah, no yeah. man it's yeah. not like life is not like that especially yeah. in a war zone especially with a general that just lost three of his men within seconds within hours right. you know so I, I think, I, yeah yeah i think the, the thing is when a movie like this comes out you know like you said we're all kind of like on edge um and like everyone uh, is kind of like jumping to see, okay, what's this movie trying to say? So I think when people see a scene like that, whether or not they misrepresent it, they're like, ah, oh, okay, that, that's what they meant. Do you know what I mean? Because because Muslim representation, Iraqi representation, Arab representation film is so rubbish. It's so minuscule, right? Whenever something does come out, if there's a slight little kind of scene that, you know, uh, seems awful, people might perhaps mis misinterpret, they will take it like the full uh, uh, gist of it. And, and, and that, that's kind of like the, the sadness of the way uh, the industry is. But, but I, I would say that, you know, Despite my reservations on that scene, in terms of the storytelling and the narrative, it was fantastic. The tension was fantastic. You know, all of that uh, was and even great. Even if you paid attention, thank you for that, of course. And but uh, sorry to cut you off. Even no, if go you ahead. Paid that scene uh, when trading the hookah for the RPG like yeah. brought a lot of people. They're like, oh, Shino, Shino, Hashid, yani are gonna change uh, an RPG for a hookah. And if you see yeah. my face looking at that hookah during that scene of them trading and like Kamal pushing me and saying, Amir, move. That's because where I'm looking is because that's the hookah that me and thought are just shared at that TV right. scene. Right. And like, I'm looking like, oh my God, you're just trading something for, of our friend for RPG. I don't care. You yeah. know? I'm sorry for my language. No, but no, that's where, that's good. where the life of a, of a soldier yeah. comes from. Like this movie has a lot of bigger, uh, bigger pictures. But if someone like has to like, you got to analyze a lot of things. It's not just it's not an um, indie it's movie. Really Thar, you've been on the edge of your seat. I know you got something to say. Yeah, <laughs> go for it. I don't want to forget. I've actually, I've actually typed some like stuff here because I didn't want to forget. But nice. go the for it. scene which you picked up on, a lot of people picked up on, and I'm going to touch on some other scenes as well. Different strokes for different folks. We're audience. Eight of us are sat watching the film. Not that eight of us are going to agree with certain things, which we're all entitled to our opinions. Now. I answered the question when people said to me, the dialogue between Jasim and the colonels. I said, right, ask yourself this. Is this happening in Iraq? Or did this happen in 2014? They say, yeah. I said, exactly. All Matthew did was put it in a script and show the world. People will take it in and think, oh, hang on a minute. Is he trying to send a message out here? The message being sent out there for the last 1400 years. We've been at it before mm. we blame the West. Mm. Let's be honest. Before we blame the West and, and Britain, we've been at it for 1,400 years. No, 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 no. You pray this way. No, 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 no. You're supposed to pray like this. La, 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 hit you, La, 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 la hit you, Adin. Am I right? No, I know you're laughing, but am I right? I no, you're right. You know, I, 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 right. I appreciate your opinion 100%. Now yeah. we all agree with that, yeah? So what Matthew put in that scene is happening. So we look at it and think, okay, I'm going to be trying to get a message out here. I said to the people, whether it is a message or not, that's entirely up to you how you take it. But that's what's happening every day, guys. Hmm. Every day, this dialogue is happening. Even before that, that's just between cigarettes and, and whatever he said about the Iranian colonels. I said, imagine what else is being said. What's hmm. your name? Omar, bang. It's hmm. a Minwen, Najaf, bang. Is that more barbaric? Hmm. Am I correct, guys? Yeah. Like, you've seen it even with ISIS in the streets. When they're stopping people, it's a min ismak haider whack. It's a ismak. That could have been even put in there. And I spoke to Matthew about that. I said, you know they do things like this. And he mm. said, that's a bit too much. Mm. So it's different strokes with different folks. You can say things and put some stuff in, which the, the intelligent guys like us will pick up on them things. Yeah, yeah. You get me? Then I say to people, as a human being, we're anxious. God created us anxious. We want to know. We, we look at that like you did, Nuri, and you've gone which is a very, very, very crucial point which you picked on. And I totally agree with you. But when people ask me the same thing, and another thing I'll touch on, which I wrote so I don't forget, is people said to me, Thea, why did they hand them British money on the, on the checkpoints? And a lot of people text me. I oh, said, yeah, you're right. 
I'll answer it now. Before Daesh, let's take it back to the first Gulf War invasion, 1990. When we first come over here in 1983, my mum still got the receipts. She changed, listen to me very carefully. She changed one dinar, Arate, one dinar. They give her three pounds 75. That's how strong the dinar was. See how strong it was? Gulf War invasion. What happens to currency around the world? Bang. It drops. We know the British pound and the dollar is stronger over in Iraq. That's what they traded with. This is what they bribed with. When it's Zgedlefer, you know, Mehman, you was there not long ago. What do they say, Zgedlefer? Allah bil khair. You give them the money, what do they do? Kiss it and put it in their pockets, correct? Yeah. That's what I said to the people. I said, look, they're not going to use Iraqi money. Iraqi money is too weak. You can't bribe someone at a board. You, they won't even take it in the shop. They're a SWAT team. No, no one, everyone that. thought they didn't exist. They're gone. Like, no one, like he said, that's what he says to him. Don't tell anyone you've seen us. Because everyone thought, like he said, Arjeen, Daesh, you don't have to Do you see, see, see the thing? So he's telling the story. Matthew is telling the story in the script. You guys, everyone thought you were dead. So anything in that mission, there was nothing getting in that way. They, look, we're dying left, right, and center. And they were still going to carry on to the mission. So whether you had American dollars, British dollars, the yen, the Dutch man, they're getting bribed on our border. So it's only because people don't understand the politics of why he given British money. People ask the question, but it's nice because why? It gives the film more strength again. People picking up on these little points like, Faya, why did he give him that money for? Faya, why did he say to him, what are you doing, like Mahayman said, when he was swapping your hooker for the RPG? Because my name was hooker in there. They knew it was me, I was a character. I used to carry it all the time. Simple things, but very effective. Hey, Salam, guys. Before we continue the conversation, this is just a quick reminder to subscribe to us wherever you listen to podcasts. We are on Apple Podcasts, we are on Spotify, we are on Anchor and YouTube. So wherever you want to listen to or watch us, please do subscribe and hit that notification button so you never miss an episode. We release an episode every Sunday. We're here building a community of Muslims who have interests in various forms of art and are interested in how it intertwines with their faith and their spirituality. There was even scenes of non-dialogue. I remember there was one scene where um, and, you, know, you talk about how uh, uh, the screenwriter director really wanted to represent uh, I- Iraqi, uh, you know, the Iraqi experience essentially during ISIS. So I remember the, 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 there's one scene um, where, and, and it's interesting because, you know, the, 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 the sect of anyone in the SWAT team is never mentioned, but there is this one scene when they're all praying. And I know I remember uh, seeing the camera hold on long enough just to see that two of them are folding their arms and one of them's got his arms down by his side. Yes. So and it was never, it was never mentioned, but like just by that way of cinematography. Exactly. And, and another one like that before that scene, when, if you, oh yeah, if, um, Hassan, have you seen the film? Hasnain has, yeah. Hasnain yeah, has seen, seen it. You've, seen oh, yeah, I have, so I have a lot it. to say. I wrote a lot of things down. But <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, don't worry about I don't want to spoil it. I don't want to spoil <laughs> anyone. But because you watched the film, I can say that. Yeah. When the first SWAT officer gets killed, when you watch us take him to the back of the Humvee, it opens. Sinan's, Sinan's already sat down. There's a close up of his right shoulder. Mohammed turns around and says, Il Fatiha. Right. If you look carefully, we say the Fatiha like this. We say, Alhamdulillah. Razak does this. No way. Wow. Yeah. Okay, I didn't know. I was going to bring that back. up, but... Watch no. it back. Now, this is where Canahan was superb. He said, it's a chetif. You pray like that with your hands crossed, and you don't pray like that. Because he wanted to show the whole world they're not just Iraqis. You got Shia, you got Sinna, and you got a Masihi. Amazing. You got Christian, Shia, Sinna, and, and um, Sunni. All together on one war, one Muhammad. And he made it, he, if you notice, it was repeated a lot, Kalwa. Anytime he had the chance, watch him. He'd look, he'd look to make sure no one was listening. And what would he say? Shunna Muhammad come. He wouldn't dare ask me. Matthew said, don't ask him, because you'll argue. He goes to ask me if you watch it, and I put my hand in his face. Four times he asks, what's your mission? What's your mission? He wanted to know. We didn't have to tell him. He and Muhammad Malitna move forward. It was a liberate moment, and obviously the moment was to find um, right. Waleed's wife. Right. See how it works. So when you pick up on these little things, people people did pick up on it. From you said, "Fire, do you know what? That's class how they've done that." And this is where Amr al Masawi come in, Sam Sal come in, Zainab come in, Doctor Abbas. They brought people from all over the world, cultural advisors. Amr al Masawi lives with ISIS for four months. He's a reporter from Germany. Mm. I spoke to him the other day. 
yeah? He lived with ISIS. So he was telling us their ideology and their thought process. And this is the Iraqi mind, and this is how the Iraqis think, even with the Burag. When I'm eating a Burag, he says, you know, you're going to end up eating me. This is a little funny thing between your, between our Arabs, our, our like our, our like sort of dialogue, like um, yeah, and um, comedic for the Arabs. The thing is that the, the 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 like I said before, the dialogue was so on point. But you know, even like you said, even the banter between people, like that's yes. banter you will hear between people in Iraq. It's not just you know a, a, a Jordanian actor and a Syrian actor trying their best to to yeah, to get course. that dialogue out. It's real. It felt if it could have been a documentary. That's how real it felt. Um, yeah, of course, name... exactly. Even with like the the the, hook, the hooker, which I put some smokes, the character I played, he carried one. That's what they nicknamed him Hooker. We all played real people. And to touch on what you said about the dialogue, I just got to get this, this in there quick. Please go ahead. Is Sir Hale. When Sir Hale was called to the audition, we got to take our hats off to him. Matthew seen Jasim as, because the real guy in, in the Luke Mongols article in the New Yorker, he was an Iraqi SWAT officer like this. And that's what the Iraqis are like. It's getting Jeb Tuff. I like it. <laughs> you know what they like? Flag after flag and Tuff and spitting and toothpicks and. And so ja- um, Sahil said, no, 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 no. He said, Bil Adab. He said, I'll tell this by our eyes. Watch, we got strong eyes. So he showed Matthew, and it's the first time I've ever heard it in the, in the 20 years of my experience. Matthew give him the role there and then. Bear in mind, this is an award-winning writer who's worked with all of the Hollywood in the audition room. He looked at him and went, you got a pass. And he delivered it fantastically. Even, we- even, and this is another one, which you're going to go back and say, do you know what? You're right again. What did he say when he picked up the gun? So I pan into the room. Remember I said there's two officers inside. He picks up a, 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 a machine gun. What does he say? Oh God, I hate yeah, guns. Get the yeah. <laughs> See how powerful that is? I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so I'm so I'm so glad you brought him up. Because I, I, I did want to ask you later yeah. on, but let's just talk about it now. His acting, like just uh, every time he comes on... Uh, on screen, I'm just mesmerized, and I'm I'm so glad you pointed out the fact that you know it's it's built that it's it's not in 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 the in the carelessness of the character and you know shouting 100%. and swearing. No, it's in that focus. Because in Iraq, that is how it works. You know, if you're focused, if you if you if you're put together, that's what kind of leads people. That's what people are. Uh, that's what people see as authority, right? But even that aside, his acting was just absolutely <laughs> phenomenal. Every time he came on screen. I just and not to say I think you you guys I think was fantastic as well. But every time he came on screen, like I was just like absolutely mesmerized and and, and again forgot it was a film. So what was it like to work with him uh, as an actor? Because uh, looking at his acting credits, I, I'd never really seen him in a film before. Other yeah, than I, the, the I Hurt Locker. But the Hale from he, well, he was in re- re- reacted or did acted. I watched him in there and I knew about Sahail in the Hurt Locker. Yeah, he played the bomb guy. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, at the end. So I knew about my mum used to tell me, say, the Habach, he's an Iraqi actor, right? And then I didn't know. I thought he worked out of Iraq or Jordan. It's only till, because me and Sahail were one of the first actors in Morocco. So the, the, the process was audition with Matthew. My manager and agent rang me from London, 2018. They said, look, Canahan's doing a film on Iraq. That's all we know. I said, which Canahan? They said, Matthew. I went, they went seriously. I said, get me in the room. No problem. Done the tape, audition, goes up to London, meets them all with the producers, camera tests, brilliant thing, passport, all this, any visa restrictions, okay, okay, no problem. Signed three NDAs to like not say what the story was about. They said, cool, but we'll give you a ring, brilliant. Sat with him. Um, two days later, I had a phone call. Are you okay doing this? I'm like, yeah, cool. When they started asking me all these questions, are you okay saying this? Are you okay saying that? That's when I knew it was an important film because I've never ever I've been asked that in my career. And I was like, well, what do you mean? Well, am I okay in saying stuff about this? I was like, yeah, that's fine. It's cool. Anyway, yeah, go to the thingy, um, the, the audition process, and then there it goes down. We meet. And then they give me the part. I get to Morocco. Me and Sahel were one of the first guys there. So we comes downstairs in like a little production meet, and then I seen him, and I knew his work anyway. So I loved like his, his thing. We knew like we had a couple of scenes together. His room was like two doors away from mine. So we sort of read, and obviously since that day jumping forward, I speak to him all the time. And tonight I gotta help him finish reading the script. Because his English ain't too tough. So any sort of emails he gets to do with stuff like that, I translate his emails and he translates my Arabic because I can't read or write Arabic, unfortunately. Nice. I can only speak it. Yeah, so we waste both ways. Yeah, but going back to the question you asked, phenomenal. 
he's, he's just so strong and he's he he goes off less is more. He said, Faye, you, you, you got high energy. When I met him, oh, lovely to meet you. I'm throwing my hands everywhere. You could see it now. I just want to grab the screen and hit it with my head. Do you get me? <laughs> but he, he helped, like, when I speak to him, he helped me tone it down. He said, listen, you've lived in, in the West. You're, you're, you're westernized. He said, these Iraqis in this, they're killers. He said, tone it down. Tell a story from your eyes. I'm not saying don't shout. But he said, tell it with fear. So scream it, but let your eyes scream it. So imagine you're screaming, he used to do that like this. His parents were police. He said, how would you tell me that from your eyes and your mouth? He said, build it up, almost like a method act, if you like. He said, then deliver it to me. And then the blinking, without blinking. He said, don't blink. Same as Alexandro Rodriguez, the editor, who will be nominated, not to forget, for two Oscars for the editing Children of Men in another film. Hmm. He said, don't blink, guys. You got strong eyes. You blink, I'll cut to another scene. So if you watch my scenes, do you notice they're all close up? They're all close up on my face because right. I don't blink. Because as soon as I'm speaking like this, yeah, there's a Humvee. As soon as I blink, he's going to cut to the other actor. Mm. Then he'll cut back. Editors hate it. Mm. So you keep it there. You don't blink. So it's a nice, strong shot. Because when we're speaking, what are we doing now? Yeah, bro, we're looking in each other's out. eyes. We look at the face. TV is like this. Look, any right. slight little movement I do, you're going to watch my head. I've done and things. So watch this. You're, you're listening to me, yeah? Do you know when I'm going like this? I don't have to ask you what I'm doing. Yeah. You know I'm moving my hands without having you to look at my hands. No, I have to minimize all that energy. Imagine and trap it in a little box like that. Do you know what it was doing to me? What was I like, Mahayman, every time they fall cut? I dropped two waist sizes. I ripped my combat pants twice, remember? Yeah, when he was, was doing the drills. Out. Was, yeah, they I said, go cut. cut. I say, get it off. Get me off the hub. Get it off. I, I sweat. And I'd have to, like, breathe because they have to tone me down. Think I'm a live wire, like a firework, and I'm sat there in this Humvee. I'm sweating, and I got this officer questioning me about the mission. But anyway, to answer your question, masterclass yeah, right there. <laughs> <laughs> Hasnain, Hasnain, you, you, I feel like you've been in that GSC as well. You got many questions to ask, uh, so, I, so please. I have, a lot to, I, have a, I have a lot to say, but you know, um, I just wanted them to go because there's a lot of content, but. Um, there was one thing in the beginning of, of, of this where they said that, you know, this war is for everybody. And then I thought of that scene where they were praying. And then you also asked them how they're, how they're connected to the Iraqi route. Now, I'm not Iraqi, I'm Pakistani, but I've been to Iraq twice, right? Um, I have my own connection to Iraq, right? Because I've been there twice. Um, and, these, and these individuals who've been through so much, they're my brothers, they're my sisters, because we share the same identity. So, you know, when I looked to the roots of Iraq, I, you know, something that came to my mind while I was listening was just like, you know, I have, I'm not Iraqi, but I, I, I have a strong identity that comes from Iraq. That's, that's part of me. So that made the movie so special to me is because one, I have a unique connection to this movie because I'm not Iraqi and Pakistani, but we share the same identity and, and, and that makes me feel for them because I know what they've been through and I know the information. Number two, they're pushing the narrative forward for filmmakers like myself. You know, the movie was in a different language. It wasn't, it wasn't English. And like they said, they, they were the Avengers. They were the forefront. They were shown in, in the light. And you know my film work. I'm trying to always push the narrative. And this is a stepping stone for somebody like myself um, to, to push that narrative. So, like, I commend, I, yeah, I commend them for that. And, and, you know, that's kind of what I wanted to say in, in the beginning. Uh, moving forward... Um, you know, I, I really loved uh, Thayer's uh, character. It was probably one of my favorites. Uh, every time they would cut to him, you can see the tense in the eyes. I, you know, as a filmmaker and as an actor myself, I always take notes of like, I, I mean, you know, when I go to the movies, people hate going to the movies with me because I'm taking a notepad and a pen and I'm writing <laughs> shit down. Uh, Which is good. I just, wanted, I just wanted to say that, like, you know, it, it, it was something that I really enjoyed. And, you know, it gives me motivation to push the narrative on my own work. Beautiful. So it's very great. true. Very true. Yeah, thank you, man. Beautiful. Words, as we man. as we kind of like what? Thar is skit, bro. Thar is an actor, and you guys will see it. You guys will see it soon. We'll see it. We'll, we'll get see it. it. We'll get it. We'll see it. You guys uh, just saw a little glimpse. This as guy we, is crazy. As, as we as, as we kind of wind down, Mohamed, I know you spoke about your experiences uh, growing up in Iraq, and again, like like just opening this episode like that. I'm really grateful for that because like I said before, when you watch a movie like this, you don't know how connected the people are. 
uh, involved uh, to the movie and usually it's just actors who have to get in the zone so they pretend to be the character for a while but then they kind of like go away from it but you guys you know like you said lived it um, so Mahima like your your identity um, going back to your identity and, and just your story gro- uh, you're having those formative years in Iraq during such a time of peril because you obviously had the Sukkot then you had the uh, the civil war and then you had the ISIS and it's just like one thing after another and like I know my Iraqi friends as well like knowing them like it, it's gotten to a stage where it's almost like death for them is just a normal thing right and life yeah. for them is just the thing they have to carry on doing you know uh I, 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 it, it's really heartbreaking but like what effect does that have on you you said you mentioned that you've had friends who've died who've, who've been killed what effect does, ha, does that have on you living in america living your life going into your acting career um what kind of shadows does that have on you so um sorry i know when, it's a very when, heavy question when, yeah so when when death is brought like in in a topic you can't really like living in iraq when it's brought up it's it's brought it's thrown around you know like you it was shocking it was shocking to see like it's very casual for me as a seventh grader or eighth grader to leave my house and like i might get kidnapped today i might die in a bombing today i was in a village lounge with my friends in eighth grade and we were and, and they were, it was funny, it was in a basement in a, under a coffee shop and the coffee shop just, some suicide bomber came and blew up the place and we were just downstairs. And you don't even have cell reception, like back then, like you don't, we don't have what, it's a third world country over there. You don't have what Americans have. So back in eighth grade, I just had, you know, like there's no such thing as like 3G on my phone or where I can call my mom and just tell them I'm okay. I'm just covered and looking and waiting to, to go up you know and how many times have i walked to class and i see the farmer's market just blow up and i fall straight to the floor like how many like these are near death situations that a lot of people not not just me but a lot of people lived through like i was locked in a basement for three days because of crossfire my house is right here and protesters are right here. uh not pro- not protesters like terrorist organizations are right here cops are right here my house is in the middle so obviously we hide in the basement so there was a lot of things that impacts you and it really tells you a lot. I, I personally never acted. Uh, this was my first movie. I've never, uh, I actually studied biology and I just graduated. Um, my goal was to be a dentist. So when I got back home, it wasn't like that. It was when Matthew called me, I'm like, who's Matthew? Like, you know, and then I got to know who these people are and like, what's going on? Hasnain's been acting for like 10 years and hasn't got a Hollywood producer call him once. So he's sitting there wondering like, what? <laughs> Why, well, you know, yeah. Mohamed just studying biology in Michigan, living his life, and then he gets the call from, you know, a guy who works with the Avengers and say, come star in this Netflix movie. How did that happen? <laughs> um, man, I honestly had, a, I took a bad microbiology exam and it was just like, I saw an advertisement, it literally said, wanted Iraqi actors, summer in Morocco. I was like, damn, I need to do this. <laughs> I was like, this, this, this exam was rough. So me and my, me and my friend, uh, we just went, it was, you know, like, it's always fun to try something it's always i would always like right. recommend like stepping out of your comfort zone so honestly even if it was an audition to sing i most likely probably would have went even though like i know my like voice is terrible but it was acting and uh, you know like back in the day i liked vine so like i would just like try to make some skits but it never worked out so i just auditioned and uh, i would get a call and i honestly didn't believe him like when they when matthew told me to google his name i literally told him Hey man, I can Google any name you tell me. I won't believe you. Like, what if I get yeah. to Morocco yeah. and sell my knees? I remember your tape. Like, you know, guys, especially Hassan, yeah? Like, industry standards. When we do a self tape, depending on what they're asking for, industry standards, chest up, a little bit of your head, look off camera. Okay. His self tape was in a room. His mate just got his phone, yeah. And this is since that day, I've never took a self tape serious. I'm like, guys, Mahaman was in a Hollywood film, what got to Venice Film Festival, Toronto, and that was on Netflix, shot on the phone in the room, where there's like, you know, uh, it was we all auditioned the same scene, didn't we? Where like, there's a machafa for butter, like there's a bomb yeah. outside the say, come here, you know, um, what is this, she, she, um, your partner's a traitor. And he showed me his tape, I said, what? You're here from that. I was like, yo, I'm ringing my agent. I said, listen, you better ring them directors because I smashed myself. So it's not going to get one of them. <laughs> this guy's over here. He just smashed it off just like the way he shot it. But yeah, his story was amazing, man. He came over quite late. And when they was telling us, I was like, well, they said, yeah, he's a dentist. But he's coming over as his first role. 
Yeah, I'm not a dentist yet, but you know, like I applied to dental school. But, yeah. So inshallah, you know, like uh want to pursue the acting career and uh, Hassanan, bro, don't worry about it. Literally just act normal. <laughs> I, I I hit my jewel mid uh <laughs> mid uh, mid audition, you know? <laughs> it's just like a, yeah, man. It was a smoking scene, you know, like the whole movie is like, oh I was like, oh I need to act this out. Let me hit my jewel. <laughs> No, but, you smashed yeah, him, him and them well, especially with the Eunice scene when you had to cry, man. And Jason oh, yeah, the I did, I, and he's not a trained actor. I know, I got the experience, so to switch it on in an action scene, not have time to build it up as if you're sat there and there's dialogue for say 40 seconds, you're just about to tell someone someone's passed away in a scene, so you can build up the tension to then start crying. He's in a firefight. And then he had to have it there ready as he's angry. So yeah. you've got two emotions in one and trying to hold them both to release that anger and the fear because he's in a firefight and then having to dip the emotion to cry then because of what happened to Eunice. Yeah. And that was powerful. Really yeah, I, know, powerful. I, I know we went on about Sohail's uh, acting, but honestly, everyone's acting in that was phenomenal. And even just, just to wind yeah. on the conversation, toward the yeah, end of, of the film... Um, uh, t t toward the end of the film, you know, w when the whole thing was revealed uh, as to what was happening, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't have his, uh, completely forgot his name, but the the, the, the actor who uh, was going into the house where his wife and, and, and daughter were being... Uh, yeah, Waleed, yeah. Half, Waleed, yeah. right. And he, he, seeing him shaking, you know, uh, he's got the key in his hand and, and like that that is just phenomenal acting that you expect to see in, in a Brad Pitt or, you know, in a Christian Bale. You that's, know, you, you, that's you something... That's something. I'm sorry to cut you off. That's some. That's some. That's one of the things that I saw, like first time being there in the industry, first time seeing what happens behind the scenes. Like I learned from Thad. I've learned from Adam. I learned because th there was some scenes where I didn't know what to do. Uh, how yeah. would I act on a close up? You know, yeah. the closest thing I've been to a camera was a selfie. So <laughs> now I have like half a million dollar camera facing me. I'm like, okay, I don't know what to do, but. They give you tips, and uh, honestly, from Thar telling me what to do about that scene, there's uh, a lot of me and Thar scene in the uh, watching the soap opera. So Hel telling me how to like uh, pay attention and just breathe and slow it down with yeah, my words, course, just and, to get the camera, and, like, man. I said, you know, and like, there's a lot of tips from everyone, and yeah, that's what made it so great, and it made it it made it easy for me to be honest. If it wasn't for uh, Adam Bessa, like he would told me, I was like, hey man, just get lost, and then when they say action, just get back into it there's a lot of things where it helped it helped it really helped because at one time it didn't feel like I was working I was just like hanging out with my friends and like we're actually a SWAT team you know like we're a SWAT and like we had a boot camp and go like if you fall during this boot camp because if you think about the movements just these little movements that we did clearing the rooms and everything that was a three-week process I know it's that the, the, the way you're pointing your guns the way you're entering rooms it was all yeah, very of course, personal muscle it, discipline. Was, it, it was very clear that you went for training yeah, of course. We, I bust my hand. All of us got injured. I still got the scars on my hands. I had mm. to go to hospital. I tripped up because the smoke, cleaning the mm. humes, are arguing in between each other. Like Matthew said, if you're going to argue, argue and swear at each other in Arabic. Mm. Yeah? You see, yeah. that's how I can keep it for the film. So you can see the way we executed stuff. Like, you know, when we went to Venice Film Festival and Mohammed Daraji was with us, I think you had the same comments in Toronto, Mohamed. When they said we can't believe these guys are actors it it's like someone documented them and just they just let these guys come along with cameras and film their day yeah it was very true and and, and that's not just down to the acting as well also down to the cinematography and, and the way it was shot you know like i said like i i'm very reserved when it comes to watching films made by made in the arab world by arabs and and and, and you know you have Turkish films as well, as well, Ertugol, stuff like this. I'm very reserved when it comes to this because I'm very particular about the cinematography. You know, in a war film, for example, I expect to see dust. I expect to see dirt on screen, which is something that, that, that Hollywood does uh, very well to make you feel like you're in a war. You know, it, like you said, it, it did feel like a documentary, but one with uh, the, the emotions of a soap opera, you know, but, but at the same time also of a real life tragedy, which is what it's based on, right? And sitting back and reflecting on the film I remember finishing the film and just thinking I can't think of anything wrong with this movie you know in yeah. terms of the uh, uh, in terms of the film itself I'm trying to think you know usually you sit down and you say you know that was a fantastic film but you know that scene where that act, where that actor did that it should have been shot with this dialogue or that should have been different I couldn't think of anything wrong with that film and like honestly it was such a throw and I'm actually going to go watch it again uh, after after having this conversation sorry Hasnain I cut you off nah I wasn't saying anything Oh, sorry. I thought you had one yeah, final piece nah, of wisdom. All my, all my things are, are done, man. You spoke about everything. You took everything <laughs> yeah, out of Yeah, of course. 
it's mm. like going back even like like the like when it happened like with Matthew when he's doing articles and he's mentioning Mahayman, the guy from Detroit, he's never acted before. He came over and done a wicked job. The guy who plays hooker for uh, from Wales, he kept coming up to me, hugging me every other day, saying, I'm glad I'm not ISIS fighter number two. <laughs> so each individual one of us had this one connection with the director. So he always remembered me, like, where I kept coming up to him and saying, thank you, I'm not ISIS number f- number three. I didn't believe it until I got there, guys, mm. honestly. Mm. I didn't believe it until I got there. I was like, you know what? Yeah, I am playing a hero. Because you uh... don't believe it, especially because of the, what I've done in my career and because of the way right, I look. Right. Yeah, it's simple yeah. as that. The way I look, my, my hair's in a bobble now. Yeah. My hair's is really long. It's, it's down here. i got a bob, yeah? In fact, I'll show you so you, you can understand where I'm coming from. Now, I look all nice. So basically, when I go in a room, they say, oh, okay, Warrior. they're looking for this. They're looking for this guy straight away. I say to people, your look is what gets you in the door. That's so the g- you can look like the character. That's the Game of Thrones look. Come on. Like this. <laughs> no, look at the difference now when I look at you. I don't even have to speak. You think something about <laughs> yeah, the I'm, I'm of I, it, Listen, I walk into the room, right? There's, there's two ways. There's two things. I walk into the room like this. It's either I'm going to pull a sword or say Allahu Akbar and everyone's going to run. Yeah. I said, you, you sell that before Ali. you get in the room. Can we, can, a chance get listen, the job. Can, can we have a moment of silence for those four actors in the beginning who did play ISIS in the film, who are still stuck at ISIS 1, uh, 2, two <laughs> and 3, even though it's a very important uh, role to have in the film. And you know, hopefully one day, you know, the, those brothers will get to, 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 to where you guys are as well. But again, like, honestly, all jokes aside, um, you know, I want to take this moment to appreciate you guys uh, and appreciate yeah, uh, so uh, the much. film. I'm glad, we cleared, I'm glad we cleared up some stuff as well. And, and it's, uh, like, I said, like I said a thousand times, it's really refreshing to, 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 hear how, to hear how invested you guys are in the film as well. Just as like a, a final question, what's next for you both? Mohamed, you know, what, what's next for you and Thara, what's next for you? Where can people find you? Me, I, I recently taped for um, Loki, the Marvel series, and oh no way! Wow, yeah, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Nice. Yeah, there. Fantastic. Um, and there's a film called Save the Cinema. It's based on a true story with a famous director called Sarah Hargreaves. She's from like the LGBT community in my city, so she's huge. She's um she's just been green lighted to direct it. So it's based in the West Wales, Kamada, and there's a city, and it's called um, Save the Cinema. So, so I play Mr. Hopkins in it. I think it's like a hotel. Uh, one of the managers in the cinema was but the obviously on IMDb. It's, it's all up there, but it's plot in the wraps. Was I'm the uh... to a series called The Contractor? Mm-hmm. Ten episodes as well, playing Tarak Marzouk, an Iraqi police officer. Nice. So they're just waiting to see what's going to happen with that, and it's attachments, guys. It's just waiting to be green lighted. So what, what 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 was the Marvel gig off the back of this film? What was there a connection there, or was it? No, it wasn't because obviously the Russos, they sort of like, they, they haven't stepped away. They're still involved in it all. But like, they're mostly like, they want to do films because um, Extraction 2 has just been announced. Nice. They're going to be filming that. Um, Cherry, which the hail's in. Mm-hmm. You know the film oh. Cherry? I've, yeah. I don't Apple, know. Apple Plus just picked it up. Okay. Long story short, Tom Holland plays the lead. It's based on a true story of four <laughs> American soldiers come back from Iraq with PTSD. Right. They okay. get robbed by the government. They end up taking too many drugs, drinking alcohol, but Sahail plays uh restaurant manager in it. And I'm gonna watch I'm gonna watch Holland. everything he's in from now on. Uh, every th- yeah, every man. single yeah, film, yeah, every yeah, single yeah, thing. Yeah. You know, you know. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I've got a guilty pleasure, which is watching every Tom Hardy scene in everything. I think so. Hell, now is the new Tom Hardy for me. Every, everything, single thing he's in, I'm gonna make sure I watch it. Nice. Uh, Mohamed, w- w- where can people see you next? <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. So, like, people just found out I I exist. I'm 26. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I just uh, I I have nothing, but maybe hopefully coming up something uh, some works. Maybe someone comes, picks me up, you know, talks to me, talk, uh, talks to my representative. So we'll soon, see. Soon coming, inshallah. Soon coming, inshallah. 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 Far, Mohamed, inshallah. guys, thank you so much. See you guys again. So much, guys. All the best. Thank you for having us. And that was a truly wonderful conversation with Da'ar and Mohamed. Appreciate you guys so much for stopping over here at 786 Boulevard. If you enjoyed this conversation, be sure to share it with your friends. Share it on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, and share it with your friends and family as well be sure to subscribe to us on all platforms we are on apple Podcasts, we are on spotify we are also on anchor and we are on youtube make sure you hit that notification button so you never miss an episode we release a new episode every sunday so be sure to subscribe and hit that notification button so you never miss an episode thank you for joining us here over at 786 boulevard